Today we'll make an interesting video about darkroom printing and in this video I will print uh, in the darkroom with a classical method with a array 4 chemistry uh, directly from the negative picture from my small trip to Sweden uh, in the small city of Norrköping and we will also compare this type of printing uh, to the scan which I made with a Plastec 135 scanner and we will also make a digital copy so I bought the macro lens for my Fuji system and I can now scan based basically make a photo of the negative uh, directly with my camera. So we will try this digitizing method and I will also in the end compare like a photo with my macro camera uh, made from the same print what I print in the darkroom and compare with the negative and which results you can pull off from all of these steps and what is like final comparison which method I prefer to use and I will like share a little bit my background uh, of all of these methods and what I like about all of them. So first of all let's start with the darkroom printing. I choose a bit old negative for today print because I want to test how the scratches looks like on the scanning and also on the printing. So these negatives I don't develop myself, so this is really old before the times when I get in a darkroom and start development of my film and scanning for myself, so it will be really interesting to look in the color balance and how well it was developed before. Usually all German labs are uh, quite horrible in terms of quality and the color balance and especially with the color development. And as we can see later, this print is not the deviation from this standard. On the first glance it looks really nice, but unfortunately all of these negatives have a scratches in both directions, you know, not only the long direction, but also the sideways on the side of the mountain. So if you have a scratches on the substrate, it's not crazy critical and it's easy to solve, but scratched off emulsion usually means you will have this scratch forever. So let's start with the calibration with my color calibrator and pop off the diffusion filter and put around f8 f5.6 and on a cyan channel with a 10 seconds let's start the calibration and calibrate all of the channels as you saw in the previous videos my calibration should be spot on and the 10 second timer here also should work perfectly fine first thing what I can see from the color balance I have a, a lot of shift in a yellow channel so on the first test print we will see if it's crucial or we completely lost all of the details. And usually if it's a bad chemicals in the lab, for example it's old stale chemicals, you will not get the same color rendering. It means your blacks will be completely off and the color saturation will be also off and shifted and probably your one of the channels will be completely off. Because in automatic heated machines, usually bleach fix is completely dead and nobody cares to change it, you will get these problems quite often in the public labs. In my case, this print looks more or less okay, neutral, and you can work with this print to get a better results. So it has a crazy high dynamic range and the film was Portra 400 and as you can see we have here all the details in the shadows also have a lot of sharpness and even this top part of the building is not completely white. Because I want to compare it to the scans I will just directly print the same settings so let's put it in my lab book, write down all the initial settings and start from this point with the enlargement with the full scale of the picture. On my latest negatives, as you saw before, I have a good color balance, it means my color wheels on the larger, more or less symmetrical. And here I have a 70 to 40 ratio, and this is completely off in my opinion. I'm not really sure, but if you have a problem with the color developer and the temperature, your color shift will be dramatic and you will lose a lot of details and information in one color of the layers on the film. But for now let's develop the bigger print and I will compare these results in the end of the video. I'm already get used to the rotation of this drum, but probably in future I want to invest in something more or less compact as a system, for example Yobo CPP2 or something like this. And I think only one reason behind it, I think I want a more compact system and have everything in one kind of a tray and tank with a rotation and fully automatic system. So let's check this print, I have all the details in the shadows and it looks exactly the same, so it's repeatable and I have this huge scratch on the surface 
which as you can understand was initially on a scan and it's not dust and we cannot remove it unfortunately. So the quality of the print I really like and I want to make one more print with the settings with a more yellow. So I reduce the yellow filtration to make picture a little bit warmer and I will add a few seconds to make the density a little bit higher to render more on the top side of the picture. So let's make a second rotations and check the result what I have after development. And as I said before, I don't really like this color crystal paper from Fuji. I will probably order something different from Fuji, probably in a roll, because always I have a problem on the one side of this box and it's a fogging of the paper. I don't know why it's happened, probably in a factory when they cut it or in a you know, shop, I don't know where they cut it actually. But that means I have a slight fogging of the paper, even with the completed turn of lights, I have a deviation in color and the picture looks a bit off and you can clearly see it on the corners, they bluish, so it means the paper is bad. And if you compare to prints, colors is completely off, so I just need to reprint it and probably my density is a bit too high, but also it's not a really good idea to change anything on the bad print because it's not really comparable because you have a fogging, you have much more density and the colors is completely off. So I take a paper from opposite side of my box and try to develop the same settings again and try to check if I have a, only one side of the box with a bad paper or it's just a few samples in the end of the box. So this wet print looks actually much better and if you compare it to the previous one you don't have a, this blue tint edges and it looks much better in comparison of the color. So I like the color balance on this print and it's much more density in the top part of the picture and I have more vibrant colors because I just have more exposure and it means the emulsion have a more details from the shadows and from the lights. But here on the windows and on the sides you can completely see the bluish tint on the whole picture and this portion especially you can clearly see in the windows it's completely tinted to the strange color but usually this problem is easy to solve and you just print the same picture with the same settings and try to for example remove all the light leaks from the room or try to remove light leaks from the paper. Because at the moment I'm shooting with the Fujifilm system and this is only one digital camera what I have and I use it generally for video. I just want to give a try to this Lyova lens to make the enlargements for my negatives. And additionally as an option this is a really good lens for reproduction and any type of macro photography which I probably will need in future. It's quite pricey in terms of uh, Fujifilm lenses and it's quite cheap in terms of 35mm lenses or medium format lenses, as you can understand. So the worst part about the whole process of film scanning with the lens and with the digital camera is just the setup what you're using. In principle you just need to buy the good light stand or you need a good reproduction stand. In my case I will use the same system what I have which is enlarger because I have old school but good light source with a halogen lamp and I have this amazing carrier with the two flat glasses with the anti-reflective coating and also it doesn't create the Newton rings. In my personal opinion this is actually a crazy good option if you just want to make a digital scans with your camera just buy on eBay this carrier and forget about the rest of the things which you can buy you know in the modern companies. In my opinion it's just not worth it and it's much better to invest your money in a good enlarger and go with a fully darkroom setup and fully darkroom development. For example in my case the whole darkroom with the all chemicals and paper and the lenses costs less than the scanning setup. So just think twice what you actually care about the digital negatives or about the art and amount of decisions what you actually make about your pictures. So I'm still not sure about the whole method. I really like the lens and the quality which lens produce. It's really high and it's metal construction. It made really well and suits for the Fuji system really well. So the lens is not the, you know, the weak point here. So let's quickly compare just results what I have. So as you can see here on the screen, I have uh, three different pictures. So the first picture, it's actually my initial print without the yellow correction and without the density correction. So it's uh, 10 seconds with the standard settings, what I get from the color calibrator. 
and as you can see it looks almost exactly the same what you saw on the screen before so it's a bit you know bluish and it's sharp what i really like about this print itself so when you load it up it's good resolution and you have a lot of details and the details on the picture looks legit and you also have additional texture of the paper which i really like so this picture no additional corrections it's just you know straight out of the camera raw file so this picture is actually tiff file and this tiff file is a file what i get from the scanner and i develop it with the negative lab pro and as you can imagine i have a little bit of adjustments here with the white balance but not so much and it's more or less close to the neutral position so i have uh, almost no correction in color here so it's just the you know balancing of the colors i also have a lot of sharpness and this picture kind of have more or less <laughs> the same quality of sharpness maybe it's a bit sharper than the print what i have so and the last picture what i want to compare it's actually digital scan I make this digital scan with the, my uh, enlarger, so I have a light, LED light source and the, you know, the lamp in my enlarger, which is halogen lamp, which should be much better than the LED itself. So, and as you can see here, you kind of have a lot of sharpness. It's, it's the same quality of sharpness, you know, when it's loaded up, I will get exactly the same, maybe a little bit better micro contrast, not sure about it, uh, because you can, you know, trick it a bit. Uh, but the colors itself, the colors looks a bit off for some reason. At least I don't understand what's the difference. I have more rendition, looks like I have a more rendition and color, but not really, uh, you know, the good colors, what I want to see straight from the camera. Maybe it's not the best print, I'm not sure. But in general, the idea and method of this scanning uh, a bit weird, so you need a special setup. So if you don't have an enlarger and you just have a digital camera and the lens, this method is just horrible. So you need a special equipment which costs, you know, fortune actually. And my scanner for 35 millimeter film costs around 300 euros. So it's almost the same like is, you know, this winding system for digital scanning. And you have all the usability of use. It's quite easy. So meanwhile it's scanning, you can also make a development of the scans and it's much better. So the workflow is much easier. You can do it on the evenings. You don't need to set up the whole system and it's much better. So I'm not sure uh, if it's my method or not. Unfortunately, I bought this lens for different purposes. Not sure if I will keep it. For now, I really like the results on the lens. Uh, but the thing is, yeah, it actually suits really well for medium format scans. Uh, maybe this is a way to go with the medium format for me or i will invest a lot of money with a good scanner i still don't know it's not easy to find actually at the moment i'm looking for the plastic 120 scanner and this scanner is kind of a holy grail for me because it can scan 120 film and it can scan 35 millimeter film and i probably will really like the results and you have a dust correction scratch corrections and it's really like you know whole package on the table uh, without any additional hustle it's really fast quick i don't understand why people are saying like scanners is slow Low. I don't know buy the good one it's really fast and uh, it's all about the workflow and process what you can do meanwhile because it's scanning uh, for you and you kind of a don't care and don't put up the high resolution it doesn't make any sense guys so uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next videos I hope you like this video it was not really easy <laughs> to create and thank you again so uh, thank you bye bye